so grateful to have an opportunity to share with you always from the Word of God. And uh, you know, it's a wonderful thing to be able to study God's Word together like this. And I want you to just think with me for a moment as you get ready to open your Bibles to John's Gospel and chapter 14. You're going to need your Bibles today, and I really encourage you. You know, I, I tell people everywhere and have done this all around the world as I've been preaching that uh, I'm not going to share with you from uh, the national publication or from a local newspaper. Uh, I'm not sharing with you today from the public opinion uh, pollsters, I'm sharing with you today from the Word of the living God. And you know, when one considers who God is and, and the, the beauty of knowing God's truth, what does God have to say to you and to me? So I want to pray with us for just a moment today, and I'm praying so very especially for all of us uh, in our turbulent world and with the circumstances of our world. And then I want to set the scene for one of the most amazing things that Jesus ever told us. And he gave to us the truth and he encouraged our hearts. So just bow your heads with me no matter where you are today. And uh, let me just ask, Lord Jesus, right now, I pray for all who listen, all who read God's word. I pray for myself. I pray for every person everywhere because we need to hear from the Lord Jesus Christ. We're living in a turbulent world. Oh God, we cry out to you. And we know that you are faithful. And you encourage our hearts. And you're going to bless us today. And I have no doubt about that whatsoever. And I pray this prayer in the strong name of Jesus through the authority of your word, giving you thanks in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you've got your Bibles today and that you're going to open them with me uh, to John's Gospel and chapter 14. Now, let me just set the scene. Our world is very, very interesting, isn't it? Uh, we are coming through, it would seem, on the other side of a massive pandemic. Every nation in the world has been affected by the COVID virus. Every nation. Every single nation. Uh, it seems like nobody has been left untouched. I know of people who have lost their lives, family members. We lost someone very close to us who died as a result of COVID. People have been afflicted. There have been all kinds of opinions. And in the midst of all of that, there are tensions. All kinds of tensions in the world. Liaisons. There are tensions related to Arab nations, to African nations, to the United States of America, to South America. We've got friends all over the world in all of these countries, and there are tensions. Uh, our politics is divided. You know, many times you and I look at the United States of America and we see the great divide, but that's true across the world. France, Israel. Israel has just gone to their third or fourth general election and they still cannot get a majority vote. The same is true in most countries around the world. People are divided against each other. What does God have to say to us? You know, we have children and grandchildren, and we're asking questions about tomorrow. We're asking questions about what kind of world are they going to live in. We're asking God to show us and to give us peace, and He will. That's why today I want to invite you to give your life to Christ. I want to invite you to trust Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. We are an imperfect, sinful people of which I am chief. But God gave to us the Lord Jesus Christ who came to this earth. He came because he loves us. And he died on a cruel Roman cross, was buried for our sin, and by the power of God, he was raised up to walk in newness of life. Isn't that fantastic? So this is Jesus. 
And listen to what Jesus says here in this great passage, and I'll read it to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. In my Father's house, there are many, many mansions. If it were not so, Jesus said, I would have told you, I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. Did you get that? (laughs) I will come back. And I will take you. I will receive you. I will gather you to myself to be with me so that where I am, there you may be also. Oh, this is what the Bible says. I didn't say this. Jesus said it. I want to speak to you for just a few moments on the subject, the King is coming. This is a marvelous promise from God's Word, isn't it? It's amazing. And friend, for just a moment, I want you to ask the Lord to help you to shut everything else out, the court of public opinion, that newspaper publication, the news bulletin that you listen to most days, the opinion of people and places, medical opinions, public opinions, (laughs) Authorized opinions, good opinions, educated opinions. Let's just listen to what the king has to say. So what I'm going to do for the next few moments is I'm going to divide this into three sections to give us an understanding. Before I do, let me tell you this. Here's what the Bible tells us, just to put it in perspective. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of God, was raised from the dead. Then he appeared to over 500. That's a great story, isn't it? Jesus showed himself. He wanted people to see what he looked like after he had died and God raised him from the dead. You ever wondered why? Not preaching on that. I think primarily because God wants us to know what we will look like after we have been raised up after death, in Christ. This is an incredible picture because we, like Christ, are raised up. Then Jesus went to the Mount of Olives and he ascended up into heaven. The angel came and said to those men standing there looking up, said, men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking up? The same Jesus who went up is going to come back down. He's coming again. You don't need to be concerned. Jesus looked at his disciples. This passage here in John 14 is Jesus teaching these people in the midst of their turmoil. And boy, did they have turmoil. They had a hated government. They didn't like the Romans. They were oppressed by the Romans. These people were oppressed. They were oppressed in every way. They were repressed religiously. They were oppressed culturally. They were oppressed racially. There was a big divide. They were being treated not badly, but harshly. Many of them were losing their lives. They were living in an unjust world, and people wanted to know, where can I find peace? Oh God, give me peace in my heart. You want peace, don't you? Listen to what Jesus said because he's the peace provider, he's the peacemaker, he's the peace giver. And what he looked at them and he said to them was, listen, I know that you're living in turbulent times, but you be assured, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God? You do? Believe also in me. Here's what I want you to know. In my father's house, There are many rooms, many mansions. The word there means that heaven is adorned with the splendor of God. 
He said, I'm going up there now, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. That word preparation is marvelous, isn't it? You know, when I think of preparing, I, I think of my wife, I think of my mother, I think of homemakers, I think of, of so many people who prepare the table for others to sit down and eat. God bless them. God bless you for preparing. Jesus is our great preparer. He's preparing for us because he's the king. Well, let's just try and understand this a little bit. All right, three things you might want to write it down. First of all, who? Who is coming? Who is this? Well, the Bible tells us here, and Jesus wanted us to know that it was he talking. He said, listen, you trust in God? Trust me. I am God. Remember what he told his disciples? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, because I and the Father are one. Now, the Bible teaches us many things about this one who is coming. First of all, the Bible tells us that he is the Son of God. Isn't that incredible? He's the Son of God. He says, believe in me. I'm the Son of God. I'm the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. This is he. It's Jesus. You ever had someone come to you and say, listen, it's Jesus plus someone else or something else? Don't believe them. Because the Bible says only Jesus is the Son of God. He's the only one who has the capability and the capacity to do what he says we don't need to be troubled about. Because he is king. He's not only the Son of God, but he's the only way to the Father. You know, later on in this passage, I didn't read it, but in verse 6, Jesus goes on and he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. You and you and you. No man can come to the Father but by me. Isn't that wonderful? But thirdly, he's the author and the finisher of our lives. The writer to the Hebrews told us about that. You can read it for yourself in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. That means that Jesus Christ is the one who made us and he's the one that finishes us. Just by the way, that little word there, he's the author and the finisher of our lives. The word there is not he's the terminator. He's the end game. He's the death maker. He's the executioner. Uh-uh. He is the finisher of our lives, which means that not only did he make us and create us in the image of God, but he finishes us in Christ. Uh, by the way, the Bible says there are two comings of Jesus. Did you know that? Uh, could we even be a little bit more complex? There are actually three comings of Jesus. The first coming, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he came came from heaven to earth. Second coming, which we call the second coming, the second coming, he's coming in the clouds. First Thessalonians in chapter 4, the Bible says that heaven is going to open and Jesus is going to come in the clouds. He's going to stop in the clouds. And when he comes in the clouds, we are going, those of us who are alive and remain, are going to be caught up to meet with those who are already in heaven. Just think for a minute. you got a precious mother in heaven. She's going to be there. you got a son who was taken. Your heart still hurts. He's in heaven. He's going to be there. What about that baby that you miscarried? That baby with the breath of life in her. She's going to be there. What about that little one when born, stillborn, or died shortly after childbirth? Or what about your grandmother, your grandfather? <laughs> In heaven today, he said we're going to be caught up to meet those who are already with him. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So Jesus coming, yes, he came born in Bethlehem's manger. 
Yes, coming in the clouds to receive us. When he receives us, all believers are going to be taken up into heaven. He's going to turn around and go back into heaven. We're going to live with him. And then after seven years, God is going to open up the heavens and release Jesus together with all of us. And we're going to come back. That is what we call the second coming. Jesus is going to come down from heaven, accompanied by all believers everywhere. I'm going to be in that group. I want you to be there. That's why I'm inviting you to give your life to Christ. And he's going to land on the Mount of Olives. And then he's going to walk down that hillside and cross over and into the eastern gate. And he's going to go back and reclaim his throne right there on the temple mound. The Bible says in Revelation 22, that the Bible tells us very clearly, Revelation 21, that heaven, the new Jerusalem is going to come down from God out of heaven. And God says from heaven, from now on, I'm establishing my dwelling place among the earth. Yes, the king is coming. Look, this is Jesus saying, don't you worry. Don't let your heart be troubled. So who is coming? Jesus. Here's the second question. How is he coming? Good question, right? (laughs) How is he coming? Three things. I want to say to you, first of all, how is he coming? He's coming to come back definitely. To come back definitely. Listen, Jesus said, look what he says here. He said, I want you to know I am coming back. If I go, which I have, to this audience in John... He's letting the disciples know. He's letting those listeners know. I want you to know if I go, we know he went. (laughs) I believe that. He came out of the grave. God raised him up. He appeared to over 500. He went back to the Mount of Olives, and he went back into heaven. Bible tells us that. I believe that. He said, if I go, here it is. It's definitive. It's definite. I will come back. I will come back. How is he coming? To come back specifically, specifically for you. Jesus looked at all of us and he said, I'm definitely coming back for you. Did you know that? That Christ is coming back for you? This is personal. You know the most wonderful thing about knowing Jesus? He died for you personally. Yes, he died for the whole world. He died for you and for you. And for you, for every single one of us. He's coming back specifically. But third, he's coming back purposefully. Purposefully. What is his overriding purpose for coming back? That where I am, there you may be also. That's the purpose of God in the coming of Jesus, is that we would be with Jesus. Isn't that fantastic? (laughs) I love that. That's why I want you to give your life to Christ. You don't miss this, folks. Let not your heart be troubled. The king is coming. Who is he? He's Jesus. How is he coming? Well, he's coming definitely. He said, I'm coming. (laughs) I'm going to take him at his word, folks. That's what believing is. It's accepting what he says by faith, right? Would you accept that by faith? Say, yes, Lord. I know you coming back, definitely. He's coming back specifically, coming for you. Would you say, Lord, I know you coming back, and if I'm still alive, it's for me. Coming back for me. Can you imagine that? I think what he's saying to you and me, that we are the apple of God's eye. He died for you. He's not going to abandon you. You're not abandoned. He's not leaving us as orphans. He sent his Holy Spirit to be in us, to dwell in us. He said, I'm coming back specifically. He's coming back purposefully. What's his overriding purpose? That all of those of us who love Jesus will be with Jesus. Get this, forever. Can you imagine being in the presence of Jesus forever? All right, two questions here about the king is coming. Number one, who's coming? Number two, how is he coming? So here's one more. Let me just give this to you. Why is he coming? Why did Jesus say this? 
Why is he coming? You know he gives us three reasons in John chapter 14. Let me just share them with you quickly. Because I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ today. If you haven't done so already, here it is. Here's the reason. First of all, to receive us. You know, in verse 3, the Bible says, he says, I will come back. And there are two translations, to take you back with me, to gather you up, to receive me. You know, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible tells us that uh, he comes to receive us. He's going to gather us. He's going to gather us like a, a mother hen would gather her chicks. You know, like a mother gathers up her, her babies. You know, I've got a good friend. His name's Todd Williams and his wife, Caitlin. And uh, they delivered twin boys recently. Beautiful, beautiful little boys, man. They're about this big. <laughs> You've never seen anything so cute in all your life. Just wonderful. Shepard and Emmett Williams. You know, I was seeing them just the other day, and Todd had one of his sons in his arm. And he's such a little chap. I mean, all you saw was this little nose and these little fingers, and then his brother was lying in a little crib on the side there. They looked so identical, so the same. And there was just such a beautiful smile on their mother's face. And I just thought how precious it is that a mother, father would, would, would just gather up their little ones. You know, this is the picture that we get here of the Lord Jesus. Why is he coming? He just loves us like that. Jesus loves you. Don't you love that song, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Because the Bible tells me so. So, why is he coming? To receive me, to receive you. Number two, to release us from restrictions. To release us. Not just to receive us, but to release us. Release us from what? Well, we talked about it, all the tension anxiety, the worry, the concern, the politics, the anger, all the things that we deal with. You dealing with things today? Let not your heart be troubled. The Bible says when Jesus comes, he's going to gather us, going to receive us, and he's going to release us. He's, gonna, he's just going to release us. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, in a moment, in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, we will all be changed. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? That's what Jesus does for us. Why is he coming? Number one, to receive us. Number two, to release us. Number three, to reunite us. Reunite us, number one with Jesus, in person. That's right, we're going to see him face to face. But number two, with all our loved ones. Isn't that fantastic? You know, it's hard to lose a loved one, isn't it? And I know you might have lost someone you just love so much. And it hurts, doesn't it? But you know, Jesus told us, don't let your heart be troubled because I'm coming back. Yep, I'm going to receive you. I'm going to release you. <laughs> and I'm going to reunite you. We're going to see our loved ones forever. Do you know that? Would you pray this prayer with me today? Would you trust Jesus? Pray this prayer. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And today, I get it. I see Jesus. I repent of my sin, and by faith, I receive Jesus into my heart and into my life. I've given my life to Christ today, and I pray this prayer in the wonderful name of Jesus, and for his sake alone, amen. Amen. If you just prayed along with Dr. Don to give your life to Jesus Christ or rededicate your life to Christ, welcome to the family of God. Welcome back to the family of God. 
Dr. Don has some wonderful resources he wants you to have absolutely free if you'll pick up the phone and call that number and let us know how we can get them to you. 866-899-WORD is a number that's not just good during the broadcast, but 24 hours a day. You can speak with us, pray with us, and if you just gave your life to Jesus Christ, let us help you in the next steps. All you need to do is call the 866-899-WORD number. If you'd rather connect online, meet us at TEWonline.org. That's TEWonline.org, a great place to sign up for the Daily Encouraging Word emails from Dr. Don, to follow him on his social media. It's just a great place to discover resources of the Encouraging Word. I cannot begin to describe to you how incredible, what a privilege and an honor to sit at the feet of Dr. Billy Graham as his friend and pastor for so many years, right there at his home every Saturday. I've put that down in Saturdays with Billy. My thoughts, this relationship, never violating any confidences, just sharing the life of this extraordinary man that God touched and used across the world to reach so many people for Christ. Friends of presidents and prime ministers, you don't want to miss this opportunity. It is filled with personal anecdotes, but above all, the blessings that flow from the heart of God's servant, Dr. Billy Graham. What a powerful time of studying the encouraging Word of God together with Dr. Don Wilton. There's so much more to discover online at TEWonline.org. Let's get connected there. Hello, my friends. Thank you for watching the encouraging Word on YouTube. If you were blessed by this message, would you like it, comment, and perhaps would you subscribe and get connected with us? In fact, if you want to discover more about the encouraging word, visit our website at tewonline.org. God bless you today.